everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. Good morning, you guys. Good morning, indeed. We're picking up with day six of our The Art of Overcoming devotional on the Bible app. There's a link to that in the description if you guys want to follow along with us. And as always, I'm going to read the scripture, then Tori's going to pick up with the Devo. Let's do it. The scripture is Job chapter 2, verses 7 through 10, and it says this. So Satan left the Lord's presence, and he struck Job with terrible boils from head to foot. Job scraped his skin with a piece of broken pottery as he sat among the ashes. His wife said to him, Are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. But Job replied, You talk like a foolish woman. Should we accept only good things from the hand of God and never anything bad? So in all this, Job said nothing wrong. Wow. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> Woo, okay. The devotional is titled Finding Peace Through Acceptance. And it says this, hearts don't just break, they also mend. That's why one of the most important steps towards closure is acceptance of loss. An emotional, mental, and even spiritual decision to make peace with our loss and to make the most of our future. You may have heard of Job, the poor guy in the Bible who lost just about everything he valued in a matter of days. Job is a fantastic model of acceptance because he was completely transparent with his suffering, but he was also able to release control to God. His acceptance was the natural result of recognizing God's sovereignty. He knew where the line was between what he could control and fix and what he couldn't. We don't know how long Job's suffering lasted. It was probably months, at least, maybe years, but it did end. That's one of the key points of the book. He persevered. He waited. He trusted. Simultaneously, he suffered. He complained, and he asked questions. Those things are not mutually exclusive. That's good. Eventually, God made it clear it was time to stop living in the past. He wanted Job to make peace with the present. That could only happen by taking on the peace of God, a peace that goes beyond human logic and understanding. So, how about you? Where are you in the grief acceptance process? Do you still find yourself fighting for something you need to let go of or holding on to something you can't get back? Do you have voices whispering in your ear, like Job did, suggesting that your suffering is your fault? Or do you hear a voice from heaven, reminding you that there is no vacancy for the job of ruler of the universe, and everybody needs to calm down just a little and let God be God? No matter where you are, I'm not here to judge you, nor am I trying to rush you along. Mostly, I just want to remind you that God is still good, and he's still in control. Keep going. Keep believing. Keep absorbing the peace of God. I truly believe that, like Job, you're going to see the goodness and the blessing of God again. I really enjoy I'm I'm really enjoying this devotional this in general. This devotional is so good. Yeah, I'm really Every enjoying day, it. Every day, yeah. One of the parts that really stuck out to me was about how those two different feelings can, they can they're, coexist. Yeah, they're not mutually exclusive. It's mm-hmm. the he persevered, he waited, he trusted, mm-hmm. but at the same time, he suffered, he complained, and he asked questions. Yeah. And I don't know who I'm talking to. Maybe I'm talking to myself when I say this, but I feel like sometimes we as believers feel like we have to put on our Christian hat yeah. and we can't ever express the way we're feeling because we're yeah. just, we're, we're blessed and highly favored. Yeah. Everything's going well. God's good all the time and all times God's good, which <laughs> yeah. is true. Yes, but at the same time, we can say, I don't know what is going on right now. Yeah. I don't know what God is doing right now. But the thing is, I'm not God. Yeah. His ways are above my ways. His thoughts are above my thoughts. But yeah. they can exist at the same time. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that we just go yell at God all the time and we complain. Yeah. But just like what we talked about on an early day of this plan about lamenting. lamenting. Yeah. yeah, about like really crying out as children of God. Whenever Micah, our child, is upset, that, he, he cries. He lets us know. <laughs> and then we know to go comfort him. Yeah, and that God knows where we are, but he wants his children to call out to him. Mm-hmm. He wants us to run to him. Yeah. That's what a good father desires. I like it when Micah desires my comfort from, uh, to, yeah. he desires me to comfort him. Yeah. It's a sweet thing. It makes mm-hmm. me feel connected to him. Yeah. 
And so if you're in that space where you're trying to play Christian, Mm -hmm. you know, take a note from what this devotional saying is don't be afraid to, to enduring that suffering and question yeah. certain things and call out to God and cry and mm-hmm. but persevere at the same time. Yeah. Wait upon the Lord. Yeah. You know, there's there's the other side as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like it has something there instead of us just suppressing the thing we're experiencing. Because mm-hmm. just like what you said in yesterday's devotional, where if we do just suppress it, it's yeah. gonna come back to bite us later on. Yeah, that's so true. And man, it's a hard book to read. I'm not gonna lie Job. to you. Job is a hard book to read. Um, and the way his wife talked to him, I like wanted to get a little upset with her. Um, but it it really is like, there is a purpose in everything that's in the Bible. Right. And like, what can we learn from this? And I think that one of the biggest questions that Christians get is like, why does a good God allow suffering? Right. And like, it's, it's a hard topic to navigate and, to understand. But the thing is, is like, we will never understand why God like allowed this to happen, but God knows and we can look at it and we can look at this story and, and say, if Job can walk through that and still trust God and still believe he is good, like, I can't imagine if tomorrow I broke out in boils from head Mm. to toe and I lost my children. Like, no, no, like that would, and and then Chad told me to just curse God and die. Like, are you joking? Like the fact that this even happened is so wild, but that Job still had the faith. Like God God trusted Job with silence, right? Like, I feel like so many believers get caught up in like, I don't hear God speaking to me right now. Is he even real? Like, but God like trusted Job. He didn't speak for like 35 chapters, but Job didn't lose his faith in God. Mm. And like, what a, like, I want God to trust me. I hope to God he doesn't trust me to like, let me go through something like that. But like, that's some crazy some crazy trust right there. Yeah. Um, and how, how beautiful is like a very hard story. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really hard, but I think something that does stand out to me. And of course, you know, Tori and I are not theologians. We'd probably have to dig into like some commentaries Absolutely. and, you know, to better understand what we can pull from this. But something I'm currently feeling is that I love that God revealed to Satan, but he also revealed to Job Mm -hmm. who Job really worships. Yeah. And it's a good question for us all to ask ourselves. Mm -hmm. Are we worshiping God or are we worshiping the comfort and life that he's given us? What are we worshiping here? Because if that comfort's taken away, Mm -hmm. what happens to us? Right. And so it's really important just to make sure that God is where God deserves to be on the throne of our heart, Mm -hmm. that our love for him is not dictated by our circumstances, just like his love for us is not dictated by if we sin or not. He loves us because he loves us. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's all I got. It's good. Want to praise him out? I do. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you that we can read all of the different stories in the Bible and learn something about how we should walk through life and who you are in your sovereignty and your greatness, Father. I pray that um, we would walk in a way that you would trust us, Father, that you would guide us by your peace. Father, I pray that you would comfort those who are in a season of great grief right now, that you would show them the hope that is in their future. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, God. Amen, God. Amen, y'all. Now's that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to Lord. Yes, and y'all don't forget that you are God's masterpiece. And don't forget that we love you. We love you guys, and we're talking to you tomorrow. Au revoir.